Coming up on Murdoch Net News, FPOS skimming hits retailers, Ramadan comes to an end, and Perth celebrates 50 years of television. Hi, I'm Adam Ballard. Welcome to Murdoch Net News. West Australians have fallen victim to a new type of bank card fraud. Over $200,000 has been stolen so far. So far, McDonald's is the only retailer to be hit by the skimming fraudsters. The major fraud squad is working closely with the fast food giant as well as police departments around the country. Detective Senior Sergeant Don Heiss says the criminals have physically tampered with the FPOS devices. In the case of a pin pad compromise where a device has been put in a pin pad, they don't know because it's not visible to the eye and the retailer or the person working in the retail store or the takeaway food store doesn't know it's there either. By skimming cards, criminals obtain pin numbers and card details, then use these along with fake FPOS cards to make fraudulent transactions. All they can do is check their, their accounts to make sure they haven't been compromised or there's a debit there that they don't know. As soon as they realise one has been done, they should contact the finance institution about it. Also, they probably should change their PIN number. Reports of the skimming emerged earlier this month and it's estimated over 2,000 accounts have been tampered with. Sophia Greenwood, Murdoch Net News. This weekend is the last of the boosted First Home Owners Grant. Real estate agents have listed auctions in record numbers. The grant came into effect last October but will be cut on Thursday from $21,000 to $14,000 for new homes. Next year it will be scaled back even further to $7,000. But young first homeowners in WA will be hit hardest by impending interest rate increases. The average first home loan in Western Australia has increased by $41,000 in the last year, the biggest increase in Australia. After one month of fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, Muslim worshippers filled Perth Mosque to celebrate. Eid al Fitri is being celebrated to mark the end of fasting. In Arabic, Eid means festivity and al Fitri means to break fast. Perth's Muslim community is made up of people mostly of Arab, African and Asian descent. Families came dressed in their traditional costumes. Men and women enter the mosque at different points, as Islamic law requires them to be separated in the prayer hall. The celebrations start with an hour of prayer. Then people embrace, giving best wishes for the year ahead. The mosque organises a feast for everyone to enjoy after prayers. Go to the mosque and celebrate the Eid prayer. And then it's nice to uh, take family and meet other friends and family. And then coming to the mosque and meeting all the community members and uh, saying thank you to God for enabling us to do that. A lot of uh, uh, colourful and lively dresses. You know, people dress for the occasion, so as you would have seen, they're uh, very colourful. After the prayer, um, you could go to the mosque maybe or visit family or friends and everyone would be sharing food and saying Eid Mubarak. It's midday now at the Perth Mosque and all the colourful costumes and the eating for the day of Eid are coming to a close. People are now going home to spend the rest of the day celebrating with their family and friends. Jessica Strauss, Murdoch Net News. The 2009 Smoke Free Perth Royal Show starts this Saturday. Final preparations are underway to accommodate an expected 400,000 visitors. This year's show will be smoke free for the first time in its 175 year history. The Royal Agricultural Society says parents are welcoming the move to ban smoking from the event. Patrons will be closely monitored to make sure no one lights up. Uh, we've got a lot of support from Healthway. They'll have ambassadors who will be in brightly uh, coloured t-shirts. They'll be going around the showground. They'll just be reminding people that it is a smoke-free event. There is only one designated smoking area located near Sideshow Alley. Displays to help teach kids about where their food comes from is a new addition to this year's show. For the first time this year we're going to have cow milking demonstrations so children can see that their milk doesn't come from a carton in the supermarket. The ever popular family day promises something for everyone. From cooking demos to BMX bikes, equestrian events, ice carving and the traditional favourites, show bags and ride. But the biggest promise this year is providing a healthier environment for its patrons. The Perth Royal Show runs for seven days from this Saturday. Hopefully the weather clears up a bit and the rain holds off. Adam Ballard, Murdoch Net News. 
This year marks the 50th anniversary of television in Western Australia. To commemorate the occasion, Perth-based volunteers of the Australian Museum of Motion Picture Technology have put together 50 years of WA TV. The Fremantle Arts Centre plays host to the exhibition Celebrating Television in WA. The organiser is a nationally registered charity group based in Perth. It's dedicated to preserving the heritage of Australia's moving image industries. Members of the group come with a great wealth of knowledge on TV and film, with prior experience in the industry. My interest is really in the history of the technology. Um, so I'm interested in the way that technology has changed over the years um, and uh, trying to preserve some of the old movie technology. He says Perth people should make the most of this unique opportunity to learn about the history of TV. Previously unseen photos and other memorabilia have emerged. The donated or loaned material will be on display at the exhibition. You can also see items from private collectors and archival video from Perth TV stations. The exhibition is free, but gold coin donations are appreciated. It opened today and will run until December 4. Claire Darling, Murdoch, Net News. Families and kids filled Woodside Plaza in the city today. There were free school holiday performances and demonstrations. Spring Fest was aimed at bringing a piece of the city alive. And this morning, it did just that. The event provided free family entertainment. There were circus performances, live music, arts activities and free giveaways for the kids. I think it's really lovely to be able to offer something in the school holidays that is art based but also free. So people get access to some great shows, um, some wonderful musicians and artists and have um, yeah, some good times in the city. The events are part of the Live at Woodside program. It runs throughout spring to support WA artists across all art forms. We're down here at Woodside Plaza, a place in the city usually scattered with suits and ties. But today it's filled with children having fun in the sun with musical performance and live acts. Jessica Strauss, Murdoch Net News. Today's public holiday marks the Queen's 83rd birthday, even though her actual birthday is in April. WA is the only state in Australia that doesn't mark the event in June. The public holiday is based on Term 3 school holiday and Perth Royal Show dates. The Royal Show has been associated with the Queen's birthday holiday since 1981. Those not at the show today still enjoyed outside activities in local parks, parks and hotspots despite the cool and cloudy weather. The Gaza Strip has been at the centre of conflict for centuries. Humanitarian aid is greatly needed in the area for the victims of attacks on both the Israeli and Palestinian occupied sites of the Gaza Strip. Curtin University group Soccer for Gaza hosted the tournament to raise funds for the people of Gaza. The region is 40 kilometres long and 11 kilometres wide. It lies along the Mediterranean at the border between Israel and Egypt and has been at the centre of geopolitical wars for its entire existence. Earlier this year, and like at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, there was those um, there was Israeli attacks on Gaza, and like there was so much devastation to the uh, people of Gaza and stuff. And uh, we wanted to do the soccer tournament then because everyone loves soccer; it's like a very universal thing, and that's the aim of like our tournament as well. It's a humanitarian thing, not a political thing. The funds raised at the tournament will go to Human Appeal International. It's a non-government organisation focusing on social and educational development, as well as healthcare and emergency relief. Um, we're taking donations, we're selling food and we're, um, like the soccer reg registering player takes $5 per person. The tournament raised $2,000 for the appeal. Jessica Strauss, Murdoch Net News. And now for the weather, Claire has the details. Thanks Adam. Cloud and drizzle with a maximum of 23 tomorrow. Showers continue on Wednesday with a slightly cooler maximum of 20. Fine on Thursday with a top of 21, continuing through to Friday with a top of 22. Back to you, Adam. Thanks for watching Murdoch Net News. I'm Adam Ballard. Mm -hmm.